when considering uh, autoregressive models, one of the major problems is deciding on the uh, lag length. So how many lags should you include in your model? And the problem is as such that uh, if you have number of lags, so this is number of, of lags uh, over here, and you have root mean squared forecast error up here, then if you include too few, uh, too few uh, lags, then you get a, a quite high root mean squared forecast error. So your uh, this this makes your um, your forecasts uh, less uh, accurate. But as you increase your um, your um, lags number of lags, you you reduce the root mean squared forecast error. And initially, you would believe that well just add as many lags as possible, um, then you could uh, drive this root mean squared forecast error down. But actually, it's not that simple, because if you include too many lags, then you would see this root mean squared forecast error rise again. And what you often say is that if you include too few legs, you are suffering from underfitting. But if you include too many legs, then you are suffering from overfitting. Okay, so you would like to be here in the sweet spot, right? Uh, and you could actually think about uh, if you were to make a map, right, between your home and the university. Um, and th this map should be uh, not too coarse, but not too detailed, right? So <clears throat> If you make the map uh, and you have, for example, the university over here and your home here, and you have like uh, some some streets going like this, right? And if if you were underfitting, you would just uh, have like a straight line. Uh, from your home to the university, and the the map doesn't really tell you much, right? So which of these roads should you take, and uh, why? So uh, the problem uh, with overfitting would be like if you um, if you kind of uh, had um, uh, uh, over here, you had like. Uh, a truck uh, blocking the way, so you are uh, forced to make a detour over here. And uh, over here, you have a red light, so you cross the street to get a green light. And um, uh, over here, uh, you have to walk around a garbage bin or something, and then you get to the university. And uh, you would normally not uh, take this like detailed uh, detour everywhere um, because the the environment it changes and this is exactly what's uh, happening if you're overfitting or or, or underfitting your uh, model you can make it too coarse or you can make it too detailed right so if you make it too detailed, uh, you're capturing stuff which uh, uh, happen in your data, but probably won't happen um, in, in the future again. So uh, the problem is uh, what, ordered, uh, what order of uh, what number of legs should we use? 
And uh, what we can use is something called information criteria. The first method that we start with is the F statistic approach. And the idea is that you have a model where t is explained by beta naught plus beta one plus beta two. Well, we have to remember the t minus uh, one here, y t minus two, and so on with the error term over here. Okay. So the idea behind this approach is to is to start with a, a fairly large model uh, with a large number of legs and then you would test the uh, the statistic on the last leg so you you would run the um, uh, the um, uh, f uh, test on the last lag in the model. For example, beta k uh, times y t minus k. Okay. So, for example, if k was the sixth lag, then you would test the coefficient on this lag and uh, look at whether or not it's different than zero on the 5% level. And if it's not different from zero at the 5% level, you would uh, just disregard this and rerun the uh, equation with one less lag and test the last lag, okay? And what you would find often is that by chance this coefficient would be different from zero in 5% of the chances uh, or uh, instances even if the true value of the um, uh, slope is actually not different from zero. So the disadvantage of this method um, or the ad advantage is that it's dead simple, but the di disadvantage is that by chance you would probably get a larger model than you should. To alleviate some of this problem, uh, you can use the Bayes information criterion, also called, called the Schwartz information criterion. And this is really just a number uh, for the, uh, the uh, model with P number of legs. So if you have an AR2 model, then P would be two. And you would um, just uh, get the sum of squared residuals from that model uh, in the ordinary regression output, the capital T is the number of time periods in your data. And this, uh, this would just be, or this ratio would just uh, be taking the natural logarithm out. And P plus one is the number of legs plus the regression intercept times the logarithm of the number of time periods divided by the time periods. So the point behind this, uh, this Bayesian uh, information criteria is that the first term, which was the logarithm of the sum of squared residuals divided by uh, the time period, the first term was just the logarithm of the sum of squared residuals for the model with p legs divided by the time period. And you see that if you add legs here, you would be able to reduce this, um, this SSR, this sum of squared residuals, <coughs> but the time 
uh, number of time periods, uh, they are just the same. So uh, you have a decreasing function uh, or term in uh, the increasing number of legs. So if you increase the number of legs, this term would decrease. But the second term, which is the number of legs plus the uh, regression <coughs> intercept uh, times the logarithm of the number of time periods time divided by the time periods, this terms or this ratio is a constant um, no matter which model we use and the uh, the uh, uh, p plus one is increasing in the number of legs. So the first term is decreasing in the number of legs and the second term is increasing in the number of legs. This means that you increase the number of legs. Well, you start with a small model and you increase the number of legs um, until these forces uh, um, counter each other. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to find the model which um, uh, which um, uh, produces the lowest number um, of the Bayesian information criteria statistic. In practice, what you do is that you uh, set up uh, possible choices for the lag length. So you choose lag length from zero to a maximum uh, lag length and you estimate the the um, the um, uh, regressions uh, for all these um, models and then you calculate the uh, Bayesian information criteria for every candidate model and you find the uh, the optimal uh, lag length which um, rep rep represents the Bayesian information criteria estimator of the lag length. So this is the model which produces the smallest Bayesian information criteria of all the can candidate models. So often if you plot the Bayesian information criteria um, on the lag length, the p, then you would start off at 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, until you have p max. And then you would often find this decreasing pattern at the start, but then it would start to increase again. So you would find the the smallest value and choose that lag length model. So in this case, we would choose the AR3 model and we would say that, well, um, according to uh, Bayesian information criteria, we would um, um, uh, choose uh, three legs uh, for our model. Whereas the Bayesian information criteria um, is an estimator of the true lag length, you can also use the Akaike information criterion and the uh, Akaike information criterion is exactly equal to the Bayesian information criteria except for the last term here. 
because here you have a, um, a constant uh, 2 divided by t penalty term for each additional um, uh, lag length or additional variable in your model. So this is the only difference between them, but as you will see, the Akaiq information criterion uh, has some other implications than the um, the uh, Bayesian information criteria, even if uh, the use of them are exactly similar. So what's the difference? Uh, the difference between the Bayesian information criteria and the Akaike information criteria is that when t is large, then the penalty term uh, for the Bayesian information criteria is larger than the penalty term for the Akaike um, uh, uh, penalty term. Uh, which means that uh, in Akaike you, you need a smaller decrease in the sum of squared residuals to justify the additional lag. <coughs> which means that um, uh, the Akaike would probably return uh, or is more probable to return more lags than the Bayesian information information criteria. And the uh, when t is large, the uh, Bayesian information criteria uh, returns uh, the consistent um, number of lags, uh, which is a benefit. But the benefit of the Akaike is that it corresponds to reducing the root mean squared error the root mean squared forecast error, I should say. So the Akaike reduces root mean squared forecast error, which is the same as reducing uh, mean squared forecast error, because they are um, uh, <coughs> uh, they are uh, one to one uh, to each other. And uh, so, so what you have is that um, the Bayesian information criteria and the Akaike information criteria has their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. And if they return the same result, then you are quite certain that this is the correct lag length. But one important uh, point is that even if uh, the BIC or AIC they are not uh, better than each other uh, but what we have to look at is that we have to estimate uh, the models using the same set of observations because if you look at your table so this is your table of y. So this is, uh, for example, um, your y variable. So this is observation one, or this is t. Okay, this was cluttery, okay? But two and up to t, right? Um, if, let's remove this one. And this is your your data table, right? So here you have, um, let's say, y1, y2, up until yt, right? And if you uh, estimate the model with zero lags, you could potentially use all the data set here, right? If you just take yt equals uh, a constant plus the error term, right? But if you would like to uh, estimate yt equals a constant term plus uh, one lag, I have to re remove a cable here. So uh, plus 
uh, but at one, this should be zero, at y t minus one. Then you see that for the first observation, you do not have a lag, right? So for this model, you could only use this set of of um, um, observations, right? Because um, you lose one of these observations because it does not have a lag. So it's probably easier to see if you have um, the variables here. So you have variables and to remove this and y t and y t minus one. So time one, two, and so on. And here you have y t or y one, it should say y one, y two, and so on to y t. Okay. So this is your data. But if you try to create the y t minus one here, then you would have y zero, y one, and y t minus one, right? But y one, y zero is not in your data, right? So you you would get a not a number. So here you, you, you would get not a number. And for each lag that you add, you would not have this, let's say, uh, one extra observation. until y t minus two. Okay. So what you have to do is that you have to consider the maximum lag length. In this case, maybe you have two lag lengths and you use this portion of the data on all the models. Okay. So if you considered two lag lengths, you have three models, lag length zero, lag length one, and lag length two, y t minus one, and plus beta two, y t minus two, plus u, plus u. So you have to cons consider that if you are using the Bayesian information criteria or the Akaike information criteria, you have to um, uh, use the portion of the data which all the uh, models can uh, utilize. So that's quite important.